Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, let's make a gravity ice dyed shirt. So for my setup, I'm using two plastic sawhorses. And then in between the two plastic sawhorses, I've placed two pieces of vinyl guttering. Then across the vinyl guttering, I'm placing a metal rack that has legs on it and the legs will help keep the rack from sliding off of the guttering. On my shirt, I've used a washable marker and drawn a line just about down the middle of the shirt. That's gonna be my guideline for where I want the gravity die to start. I've placed that line really close to the edge of the metal rack and I'm poking the fabric through the holes in the metal rack. That's gonna help keep the shirt on the metal rack while I'm ice dyeing it. And it's also gonna give a design factor to this part of the shirt. I'm kind of gathering and bunching the shirt up and poking bits and pieces through each one of the holes. I forgot to mention too that I actually faced the shirt down when I started to poke it through the holes in the rack. So whenever I do like tall deep scrunches or things like that, I found that I get kind of a more unique look on the front of the shirt where the dye runs down to the front instead of the back of the shirt where I actually put the dye. So I'm gonna see if it works with this technique as well. I've done one of these shirts before, but it's been quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and face the shirt down and see if it makes a difference. I can't remember if I did that the last time I made one of these. I'm going to apply the dye in stripes on the shirt and I'm starting with wet sands from Dharma Trading Company. After wet sands, I'm going to use gold finch from Dharma. And both wet sands and gold finch are special order colors. You can still purchase those from Dharma, but you have to purchase them in large quantities. However, there's a group out on Facebook called tie-dye supplies marketplace that sells the special order colors and I've placed a link down below in the description for that Facebook page. People purchase them in the larger quantities and then they repackage them and sell them in smaller quantities. The next color that I used was saddle leather from Dye Spin followed by amber waves from Dharma Trading Company and the last color that I'm using is Winter Wren from Dye Spin. Now I'm gonna add some additional soda ash over the top of the dye. This is just to make sure whenever I apply as much ice to the top of the shirt as I'm gonna put on top, that it doesn't wash out all the original soda ash from my soda ash soak. The dye needs the soda ash to raise the pH so that it will properly bond with the fabric. I'm gonna add some large chunks of ice to the top and I make these large chunks of ice in pretty much any kind of container I can find. I use a lot of Cool Whip containers, meal prep type containers, just any container I can find. After it's empty, I fill it with water and freeze it for ice to use outside like this. In any of these small little areas, I'm gonna apply some two inch ice cubes that I have. It's pretty hot today, I think it's like Oh, over 100 degrees. So the larger chunks of ice are gonna take a little bit longer to melt, but they still go pretty fast. So here's a photo of my entire setup so that you can see the way I have it done. And I'm actually doing another shirt on the other end of the vinyl guttering. I've also included some process photos so you can see kind of how it went as the ice melted. After the first layer of ice melted, I came back and added a second layer. I couldn't get the ice to come out of the containers for a few minutes until it warmed up enough. So that's what you're seeing on top of my shirt is the ice still in the containers. 
So after the second layer of ice melted, I went ahead and left the shirt outside. I left it overnight and all in all, between the beginning of starting the shirt and when I rinsed it, it was probably about 18 hours. Like I said, because it was hot enough, I didn't have to leave it a full 24. So I took the shirt into my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I didn't have a lot of excess dye coming out of the shirt, but I went ahead and soaked it anyway by placing the shirt in my utility sink, adding some blue Dawn dish detergent to some really hot water and just allowing the shirt to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and I continued the soaking process until my water was almost clear. This time I really think I only had to soak it once. Then I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. So now that the shirt has been washed and dried, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one looks really cool. I think the colors and the dye flow down the one side of the shirt really make it look like sand dunes. I also really like the effect that it gives poking the fabric through the holes in the rack. It gives an illusion of texture to the shirt, almost like flowers or truthfully, it kind of looks like, do you remember how in the 90s it was really popular to do sponge painting on walls? It almost looks a little bit like that, that kind of texture. So the texture mixed with the color splits I think it's a really unique effect and I think it really stands out. So remember I placed the front side of the shirt down to see whether it made a difference in the dye flow. And I do see a little bit of difference, mainly in the intensity of color. So the colors on the back of the shirt where I actually applied the dye are darker. And I do have texture on the back of the shirt like I do on the front. So as far as if there's a huge effect, I see a little bit, but not enough that I would definitely suggest that you place the front side of the shirt down each time. I don't think the difference is as large on this as it is on like a tall deep scrunch. I really love the color splits in Winter Wren, which is the color that's up at the top. It kind of has some pink in it and a little olive. And then the wet sands down at the bottom has got a couple of those same colors. I like that a little pop of pinky mauve in the shirt. So I really love the shirt. I think the dye flow in this shirt looks just like flowing sand dunes. But what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know what you think about this shirt. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.